sync Active Directory on-premises to Azure AD using Azure AD Connect. That's the subject of today's video. We will look at installing an Active Directory forest on a Windows 2022 server. We will look at installing the ID fix synchronization tool to look for any errors that might stop us from synchronizing our AD to Azure AD. We will install Azure AD Connect on our server and see the different methodologies that can be used. Stay tuned, it's coming up. All right, here we go. We are going old school and we're on a Windows 2022 server and we're actually installing Active Directory. We're gonna configure a forest. So we're into the server manager, we're adding roles and features into server roles and we're selecting uh, Active Directory Domain Services, of course. It's been a while since I did this and I'm not used to on-premises stuff, I'm gonna admit, but let's give it a go because let's face it, we need Active Directory, on-premises Active Directory, in order to sync to Azure AD. Right, let's go and, yeah, we'll restart the server if we need to. We'll go ahead and we'll click Install. Let's install Active Directory on an actual server. It's been so long since I did this, I'm quite excited. Okay, and we are installing, installing, installing. This is gonna take a bit of time. And we're, there, we're looking good. Uh, amazing, what have we got here? Click on close and, oh, we've got a nice yellow flag there. We've got some further actions. Deployment, post deployment configuration actions. We need to promote this server to be a domain controller. We'll go into that and we need a brand new forest. So we're gonna add a forest and I'm gonna put in my root domain name. Now my Azure AD domain name is Peter rising m365.com so i'm gonna add that right here amazing let's click on to next and next we want dns there we want this to be a global catalog and we need to put in the directory services restore mode password as well not something that you should ever really need except in emergencies but um, make sure you've got that written down locked away somewhere very secure click on to next and we'll go next again. And the NetBIOS domain name will populate itself. And it should just be the first part of the domain name without the .com on the end. It should just be Peter Rising M365. Indeed it is, there we go. We can click on to next and proceed to the next step of setting up our Active Directory uh, folder locations. You would never really put those all on the C drive, but for the purposes of demo, I will just do so. And we'll go through a prereq check here. Now it won't let you proceed with installing Active Directory here if you have any red errors. We've got a few yellow triangle warnings there, but uh, they are all good. And if we scroll down, we should be able to see that all the prereqs are completed. Excellent. Click install. Click on install. And there we go we're successful and it tells that we're about to be signed out because we need to restart so we click close and if we close this window as well our server should start to restart and there we go there it goes now when we log back in we have to connect this is a virtual server i'm connecting to it from my mac now i need to put in my domain credentials here so that's all good connect with the uh, AD Forest credentials there, we're in, we're waiting for the group policy client. This is taking me back so much. It's been so many years since I've actually played with servers and on-premises Active Directory. Into Server Manager, open up tools, and there we go. Active Directory users and computers. And there it is, and it's not changed a bit in all these years that you think they would have freshened up the look a bit. Um, but I suppose Microsoft are really trying to kill off on-premises technology, so why would they? Into users, the users organizational unit. I have my Peter.rising user object there, which I use to set up this Active Directory. Now, in the real world, again, you would not have an actual person's name there. You would have administrator or, or something of that nature. And we go into the membership there. You can see I've got everything. I've, Enterprise Administrator is the 
all-powerful sort of on-premises equivalent to the global admin. I've got domain admins in there as well, schema admins, all the powerful stuff. But in the users container there, I'm going to go in and create an actual user. Let's create a real user object. Let's give ourselves another Star Trek character. How about we create... I know, we'll go for Deanna Troy. Ship's counselor, Star Trek The Next Generation, and more recently of Star Trek Picard, a fantastic show. I encourage you all to check it out. We've got our user log on name of Deanna.troy at pizzarisingm365.com, our uh, pre-Windows 2000 name there as well. We've only got one domain in the drop down there. We'll come back to that in a bit. I'm not going to enforce a password change at next logon. Um, you would potentially usually do that depending on your policies for on-premises deployments. It's been so long since I've been in the on-premises world. It's so familiar yet unfamiliar to me. Weird. Right, next, finish. And we've got a new user object, Deanna Troy. There she is. Now, next, I'm going to install ID Sync. ID Sync um, is... No, not ID Sync. ID Fix. Been such a long time. ID fix. You can find this quite easily from a Google search, from a GitHub repository. I'll put all the links in the chat, but it installs from a quick setup and then straight into this utility and click on query and just click yes to that. And what this is going to do, it's going to show you any potential issues with any user objects that you're going to have syncing to Azure AD. Now, there was only one object in there, my username, Peter Rising. I'm going to go into Active Directory Domains and Trusts here, as you can see, and I'm going to add an additional or an alternative UPN suffix here. I'm going to put in a .local domain here, Peter Rising M365. .local, and add that suffix in. Now, this is a non-rootable domain name in the real outside world internet, that big bad internet that we all know and love. .local names will not be rootable, and it'll give us a problem statement when we run Azure AD Connect. Now, let's take a look at Deanna Troy. If we click the drop down there, yeah, we've got that dot .local in there, and I will, in fact, select that as her user logon name. There we go. All good stuff. Let's query ID fix again. Click that query button. We should get two responses this time. In the real world, in legacy servers, there we go, Deanna Troy. It's highlighting that dot .local value, and it's suggesting an update for us. It's suggesting the update to the real rootable domain name of .com. Um, and in the real world, you would have a lot more entries in here, probably from years and years of legacy AD. You'd probably have a quite a bit of work to do to change some values and look for duplicate entries and all that sort of thing. And you can go in and you can use the action columns at the right to edit and come complete those and then and only then when you're happy you can go ahead and start getting azure ad connect here you can find that from microsoft.com from a quick google search or I, I guess i should say a bing search um as i'm a microsoft person but old habits as they say very easy to find though we can find microsoft azure active directory connect this is the tool that we are going to use to connect our on-premises active directory to azure ad or microsoft 365 interchangeable terms as i always say we're getting some system requirements we're getting some install instructions i'm using windows server 2022 it says that it's compatible with 2016 and 2019 but i'm going to do it anyway download because i know it works Interesting. But there we go. We've got our MSI. We can uh, download very quickly, open the file, and it launches into the installation immediately. There we go. Let's go through this installation and get going with good old Azure AD Connect. There we go. It's launching. You can cancel it at this point. Just launch it from the desktop. It gives you a nice little icon. And yeah, you've got to agree to the license terms and the privacy mode, and then click on to continue when you are ready. Let's do that. Express settings, quick default settings that you can configure. I don't want to do that. I want to customize how I install Azure AD Connect because you can select the different sign-on methods. Express settings will give you password hash sync as the default, which is the best one in my opinion, but you may have other requirements. Um, Clicking next, you can look at the install required components, and you can choose if you want to use your own SQL server or specify a custom installation location and all other 
manner of things there. But again, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna go straight past, just accept the defaults and look at the user sign in options. Password hash synchronization is the default and the first on the list. Uh, so that's the one I'm going to select, but we'll take a look through at the descriptions of what these all do. Uh, we've got pass through authentication as well, which is what you would select if you wanted to have the authentication back uh, to your on-premises identities on Active Directory. Federation with ADFS, Active Directory Federation Services. Pretty outdated methodology now. Larger organizations were using that back in the day and are probably gradually looking at transitioning to uh, pass through authentication now. Ping Federate, not something I've ever, ever configured, I'll admit, but that's uh, another version of Federation. And you can select to not configure anything at all. Now, single sign-on, always, always encourage enabling single sign-on because it just uh, gives the user so many, uh, uh, much more convenience. Um, and if you select these, you can see the, the different tips and instructions that you will receive. Uh, depending on your selections and uh, Pink Federate, they will guide you through you know, the setup. But I want password hash synchronization, the same sign-on experience with PHS. I want that lovely single sign-on experience so users have that sign-in once and then they're not being challenged all the time. I'm going to connect to Azure AD and I need my global admin uh, credentials there to connect. So I'm entering those and off we go. It's examining the domains. Success. I am connected. Uh, now I need to add my uh, AD Forest to connect to Azure AD. So I need my uh, enterprise admin username to connect here. And I'm going to select to create a new AD account. I'm going to go with the recommended option to let the wizard create an account for me that is going to, to manage this all for me. And there we go. We are added. We have a lovely green check there uh, and our directories are connected we can go to next uh, amazing now sign in configuration we've got a little problem here this is why i added the dot local earlier we can't proceed well we can proceed it's just giving us a warning we can click a checkbox here to continue without matching all upn suffixes to verified domains but it's telling us that we cannot add dot local addresses and this is the point that I wanted to illustrate. You will find that many, many legacy ADs have those .local uh, domain names in there from years gone by. And for, for, for tidiness, I would try and remove those and uh, make those changes. ID Fix will help you to identify those, but I'm gonna remove that back in AD domains and trusts. I keep wanting to say Azure in front of everything because I'm so used to the cloud these days. On-premises is so alien to me these days. Let's just check with uh, Deanna Troy. Let's make sure that she no longer has a .local in her account drop down on the suffix. Yes, we are good. Now, if we go back into the wizard and proceed, we don't get that warning. We are all good. And we need to select the on-premises attribute to use as the Azure AD username. We're going to go for the user principal name. That is the standard. That makes sense. UPN is a good way to go. Next, we can choose if we want to sync all of our uh, domains and OUs, or we can sync selected domains and OUs. And we can include or exclude uh, OUs and domains as, as needed, as we wish. Now you can do this sort of thing a bit later, retrospectively from within um, the uh, Azure AD Connect Sync tool. Um, but I'm, I'm going to go with the, the standard to sync all. Uh, here we have some settings to uniquely identify your users. Uh, users are represented only once across your directories or uh, they exist across multiple directories. Now, which you choose here will depend on the complexity of your on-premises AD forests, whether you have forest trusts and all that sort of thing going on and global organizations might have very complex AD infrastructures. But um, I'm going to go with a very standard uh, model here of users being represented only once across all directories. The source anchor, you let Azure manage the source anchor. Now that source anchor, um, you can choose a specific attribute for what you want that to be. Now, I always set that and it's recommended to set that to the ms-consistency-guid. Uh, What's that called again? Let me see if I can find it. It will 
I believe the default setting will will set that to be that, but I always like to see that selected. Here we go, the MS uh, hyphen DS hyphen consistency good. All is good, uh, amazing. We'll click next to proceed. And we've got some more filtering options for users and devices here. We can do all or get granular. Then we go to the optional features. Now, if you had Exchange Server installed in your um, AD Forest, um, hopefully a newer Exchange Server like 2016 or 2019 or whatever the newest version is, I think it's 22. So unfamiliar with on-premises these days. You, you would select these tick boxes here for Exchange Hybrid Deployment uh, because it's very likely that if you're synchronizing your AD to Azure AD, you, you're probably gonna want to migrate your on-premises Exchange to Azure AD, to Exchange Online at some point. So selecting this Exchange hybrid deployment is going to be important for you to select here. You may have those awful, awful public folders in your on-premises Exchange environment as well. If so, you can tick that box there too and include that in the process. The cloud version of Exchange Online, it does still support public folders. Why you would use them, I have no idea because they are awful, but they are still there if you want to. Azure AD uh, app and uh, attribute filtering, that won't stay highlighted for some reason. We'll come back to that in a, in a wee while. Password hash synchronization, it's great. We can't change that because that is the sign-in method uh, that we've selected. Now, password right back, I always encourage selecting because that will enable your users to be uh, able to reset their own passwords using SSPR, self-surface password reset in Azure AD. A great feature, which if you have the ability to use it, always set it up because it's gonna save your support desks so much time and effort. They've got better things to be doing than resetting users' passwords. If they can do it themselves, check that box, enable SSPR in Azure AD, and you're good. Device write back features as well. Those features are, are now in another location, which is why that's grayed out. That's earlier in the wizard in that device uh, filtering section that we had. Group write back features as well we can enable. I just sort of glossed over that one. And directory extensions attribute sync as well. Some lots of optional features there you can configure. I would be selecting the Exchange hybrid deployment there. Imagine I've ticked that and I've got an Exchange on premises server built. I've just been too lazy to set up an exchange server for the purposes of this demo, but use our imaginations. And I'm going to go for a uh, password write back as well. So, um, and let's, let's actually check that Azure AD app and attribute filtering also. And then when we click next, that's going to give us some visibility on what that actually does. And we can be granular here. We can select the Azure AD apps that we want to restrict to the list of applications. So let's see what that looks like. If we click that checkbox, it just means we can select the ones we want or don't want. So I'll leave that the way it is with the, the defaults and I'll click on to next. And then we get a similar thing with the Azure AD attributes. Now this is a very exhaustive list of Azure AD attributes that uh, will be exported to Azure AD. And um, I'm not gonna change any of these either. I'm going to let that be the default. And uh, you can look at that later on in the in the synchronization services tool that will be installed uh, by this process. So um, well, here we go. Final stage, we need to enable single sign-on by verifying or entering our credentials as a domain administrator. I'm going to use the same account that I used earlier, my on-premises uh, account, which is peter.rising which is an enterprise admin, a domain admin, a schema admin. It's got all the admins, and um, do be careful with that. Obviously, if you're running a real-world on-premises um, environment. But uh, for the purposes of demoing, I've given myself everything, so I can use that one account to enable the single sign-on with this wizard. There we go, all good, nice green check. We can click on next, and we are getting ready to configure. It's checking for the installed comp. Components. Now, here we go. We can start the synchronization immediately when the setup completes. That's checked. I wanted to do that. And there may be some occasions where you're not ready for that, so you can leave that unchecked. We also have the option here for enabling staging mode. Now, when that is selected, it um, synchronization will not export any data to AD or to Azure AD. Now, that is a good thing to have in place, to have a staging server ready to be 
brought into operation if your main Azure AD Connect server fails for any reason. So I would go through this setup as I'm doing here by not selecting this, then go through the process again, but enable on another server and enable staging mode. So you've got that backup server ready to go, ready to be brought into operation as your backup. Right, we are installing, we are configuring. This takes a little while. So I skipped the video there. I paused it a little bit. I came back uh, after many, many minutes it took to do that, four or five minutes. Uh, but our configuration is complete. And we've got some little links there which will help us to learn how we can configure the recycle bin for um, Active Directory and uh, uh, details on how to configure single sign-on experience. Whilst this is enabled, you do have to enable it further for the users in group policy or the registry editor. I can put some links in for that, though. We've got some new um, icons here in our start area, and I'm going to go into the synchronization service here, and I'm going to run that as an administrator. And here you can see the synchronization in progress. So if we make that big, we maximize that, we can see our first synchronization has largely been a success. One of the items there, the um, the full import on the on Microsoft.com, uh, completed with no, op no objects, but that's not unusual at this stage. And if we do a, a manual sync, which I'll show you in a moment from PowerShell, I suspect that will be fine. But you can click on these options, these, these lines, I should say, and get some details on the panels below on terms of what it's doing and we can get an understanding of why on the um on the connectors panel we have two connectors we have uh, a uh, windows active uh, windows azure active directory um connector and we've got the adds the on the on-premises active directory domain services as one as well the this top one the um azure active directory one we can go through and look at some of the properties in here and we we could configure some of the attributes in here and adjust those if we wanted to we saw that exhaustive list a bit earlier in the setup process so we could go in here and modify some of those attributes in the uh, on-premises connector here, the ADDS one, um, you can go into here and configure the directory partitions. And in the containers button here, you can enter your, uh, I can enter my global admin credentials here. I can just overwrite that MSOL username there because I don't know the password for that. So I can just backspace that out and go in and put in my own credentials and my password. So we shall do that very quickly. I did my Peter dot rising, and there we go. Password in and okay. And we should see in here the uh, the OUs, the containers in Active Directory, and we can check these or expand these as needed. And include or exclude what we want to be synchronized from on-premises AD up to Azure AD. So some something you can do retrospectively if you want to go back and change those settings. Amazing. So um, Azure AD Connect will sync every 30 minutes by default. You can change that frequency if you want it to uh, be different. But I'm going to go into PowerShell now. I'm going to show you how you do a manual sync on demand. You can do it on demand by inputting this wonderful PowerShell command, let's start hyphen ad sync sync cycle. What a strange command. And if you press the tab button while you are typing in any of these PowerShell commands, uh, it should complete the command for you. Or if you get far enough. And there we go. Yes, so uh, we'll just backspace that Y out there now. So start hyphen ad sync sync cycle space dash um, policy type. And I tabbed again to complete that. And then Initial, uh, I will do first, and an initial sync is a full sync. So we'll do that, and it should do it pretty quickly. Yeah, result success, amazing. And we can go back into the operations tab, and we should see that start to take effect. Wonderful, it should get going there. So we're doing a full sync, otherwise known as an initial sync. There we go, it's in progress now. Uh, so that will do a full sync. We can also do a delta sync. So we'll let this one run through this initial sync. It usually doesn't take long at all to, to go through all of those lines that it needs to do. And we're getting lots of nice successes. That full input this time has succeeded. 
I think I said input rather than import there, but never mind. Okay, we're good. Amazing. Let's repeat the process and put in a delta sync this time. A delta sync will do any changes since the last synchronization. So a couple of different options there for you to do a, a manual synchronization. Now, why you might want to do this is you might create a user in AD and you might want to get that user going with their Microsoft 365 account quickly so that that um, that manual sync will, will get you synchronized quickly. And there we go. We've got Deanna Troy in our tenant. We're in our Azure AD active users now. And we've got Deanna Troy there. We can see that she is synced from on-premises in our sync status column there. We've got two different things, sync from on-prem and in cloud only. We've got that on-premises directory synchronization object, which has been created. So don't ever try to delete that. You, you won't be able to anyway, because as we can see, if we go into Deanna Troy here, and I did have to assign the license there, by the way. The license doesn't get assigned manual. I did that earlier just for your benefit. But um, So remember to assign the license. I, I, I go into here, and um, if I try and manage the contact information, it's telling me that this user is synchronized with your local Active Directory. And we can't make these changes for me. It has to be done from on-premises AD. So we can't do a lot of things with synced objects. We we can't manage the username. We can't uh, delete the user from here. It's telling us we can only delete this user from on-premises AD. So really cool stuff. We don't have that limitation with in-cloud users, of course. We can go ahead and uh, click onto Jean-Luc Picard there, and he's a cloud-only user. He's in the clouds and we, we can do whatever we want from here. We can delete the user if we so wish. Now we, we can sort of merge users together in this scenario. I'm, I, I hear you thinking, well, what if you want to make this a, a synced user as well? Well, we could create a, an on-premises user for Jean-Luc Picard and we could do hard matching or soft matching to, to sync those together and, and do that. But there we go. Right, into the Azure portal. Let's go into uh, Azure AD and Azure AD Connect. We can see some details about our Azure AD Connect uh, right here in the uh, Azure AD portal. We can see Get Started, Cloud Sync, and Connect Sync. Cloud Sync is something we're going to come on to because that's a newer, different methodology than the more traditional Azure AD Connect Sync. And we can see here on the Get Started, we can have a comparison here of Cloud Sync versus Connect Sync. Now, it's interesting that they recommend Cloud Sync. And that's interesting to me because it still has some features that are that are missing, really. For example, I, I may be correct. I hope I'm correct, but we can certainly check this. In that it doesn't do things like the Exchange Hybrid support that the full uh, Azure AD Connect Sync offers. But you can see the, the features that are included with both of the the versions. Now, Cloud Sync, it has the benefit of being a lot more lightweight. You don't need that Azure AD Connect installation on a, on a dedicated server. You have to install agents. But we'll come to that in, in another video, very likely the next video in the series on this. Um, but uh, do, do have a look and see which one is going to work for your needs, for your unique organizational needs. Let's have a look at what we're talking about today, though, which is Connect Sync. And we can see here we've got our sync status in there. We're enabled less than an hour ago. Password hash sync enabled. We don't have federation. We don't have um, pass-through authentication. We do have seamless single sign-on there. We've got one domain enabled. And then if we go down to the bottom there, we've got some health and analytics stuff. Now, this is really cool stuff. We can click onto Azure AD Connect Health, and we can take a look at uh, uh, at some of the errors and, 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 and services and other things in, in here, some of the settings. Let's start with sync errors. If we had any sync errors here, we would see things like duplicate attributes, data mismatches, data validation failures, large attributes, and so on and so forth. These are the sort of things that you can also see by using the ID fix tool, but just from the other, the other side of that. We can expand our dot on Microsoft domain. We can see the name of our Azure AD Connect server in here, and we can go into there and expand that and see if we have any alerts. So really cool stuff indeed. We've got a very, very healthy looking Azure AD Connect though. We don't have ADFS services here. We don't have 
ADDS services either. Uh, we can allow Microsoft access to the tenant's health data. That's on by default, but we can turn it off if we don't want to share that. We can look at some role-based access control settings as well, and we can troubleshoot and do um, new support requests from right here also. Back in our uh, Microsoft 365 admin center, if we go into that full home page, uh, we can see on the right now under user management, we've got a Azure AD Connect in here as well, and we can look at the sync status and the password sync status as well. And that's it for today's video, folks. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you've learned something about uh, Azure AD Connect. As I said in the demonstration, we will do another video very, very soon on the other methodology that is available, which is Azure AD Cloud Sync. Not something I've ever done before, actually, so I'm looking forward to uh, getting into it and giving it a try. Uh, thank you so much for supporting the channel. Please remember to subscribe, hit that notification bell, hit the like button and share around so other people can learn along with us as we learn Azure AD from the very beginning. Within this video today, a little smattering of uh, on-premises AD with it as well. You really can't avoid it completely. I'm a cloud first person, but on-premises, it's going to be around for a while yet, isn't it? Thank you so much. Take care. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.